Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record audio in GarageBand for Mac. If this is your first time here and you want to master GarageBand, improve your music and learn all other kinds of GarageBand related stuff, Start now by subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. First things first, before you even start thinking about recording in GarageBand, it's important to get your project set up correctly. Doing this can save you some headaches down the line. When opening a new project, GarageBand gives you some templates to choose from that can help you get started quickly and easily. Each of these templates preloads a selection of track types specific to which one you choose. Alternatively, you can open an empty project which allows you to build your GarageBand project from scratch. Personally, I almost always go for this option. The details menu at the bottom of the window allows you to further tinker with the settings of your project. Don't worry if you're not sure of the exact tempo of your project going in, you can change it and other parameters from GarageBand's main workspace at any time. If you plan to attach an external recording device like a USB microphone or audio interface, you can select it as an input device here. You can also select other output sources like studio monitors via an audio interface, for example, here. Once you're happy, hit choose and your project will open. From capturing a rough vocal track with your Mac's built-in microphone to recording professional quality audio via an audio interface and microphone, the two variations of audio track are what you'll be using to capture real-world audio. The first audio track option is geared towards recording audio through a microphone. The simplest way to get real-world audio into GarageBand is via your Mac's built-in microphone. Fair warning though, if you're looking for great or even good sounding recordings, using your Mac's built-in mic ain't gonna cut it. Having said that, it's quick and easy, plus you don't need to set up any input options or configure anything apart from your track's volume settings. Your second option is to use a USB microphone. USB microphones are a great middle ground between ease of use and sound quality. What's more, GarageBand will automatically recognize when you attach your USB mic to your Mac and will give you the option to use it as your primary input source as soon as you attach it. The quality of the recordings you're able to capture with a USB microphone is tied directly to how much you want to spend on one. Beware of super cheap options, as their quality can sometimes barely improve on your Mac's built-in microphone. spending a bit more will yield much better results. For the best quality recorded audio, an XLR microphone connected to your Mac via an audio interface is your best option. It is pricier, with you having to grab an interface and a microphone, but the jump in quality when compared to your USB options is worth it.
The second audio track option creates a track that's set up to record a guitar or bass guitar. Using one of the audio interface options I talked about earlier, or an interface designed specifically for guitars, like IK Multimedia's iRig HD2 for example, you can access GarageBand's fantastic amplifier and pedal board sims. If you want to find out more about the different ways you can connect your guitar to GarageBand, click the card that's in the top corner of your screen just now. With all that out of the way, it's worth taking a second to check GarageBand settings before hitting record. Making sure everything is set up how you want it can save you some time later on. You can open GarageBand's preferences menu from the GarageBand menu in the toolbar at the top of your screen, or by using the keyboard shortcut command and comma. Here, you can check and change your input and output settings in the audio MIDI tab. In the advanced tab, audio recording resolution is set to 24-bit by default, and I would recommend that you just stick with that. If unchecked, your projects will be recorded in 16-bit resolution. And while that does result in smaller file sizes when exporting, it does negatively affect the sound quality. While not the most exciting process in the world, taking the time to properly tune your instrument will ensure your project sounds its best. GarageBand's built-in tuner will work great whether you are making up your instrument or inputting it directly. Open the tuner by clicking on the tuner icon at the top of the GarageBand window. Right next to the tuner are the count in and metronome buttons. Turning the count in feature on gives you a one or two bar count in before recording begins. You can change the length of the count in by clicking record in the toolbar at the top of your screen and hovering over count in. Activating the metronome will play a click track to the tempo you specified when setting up your project. It's worth noting that you can turn the metronome off at any time while recording or when playing back your project. The last thing you need to do before hitting record is to make sure your recording level is properly set. If turned up too high, your recorded audio may be too loud and result in a distorted sound. This is called clipping. Too quiet and you'll run into problems matching volume with the rest of your project and when applying effects like compression when you come to mix your project. To set your recording level, make sure the track you're working with is selected and open GarageBand's smart controls. Open smart controls by clicking the small dial icon in the top corner of the GarageBand window or by double clicking on your selected tracks header. You can adjust your track's input volume using the marked slider or check the automatic level control box to have GarageBand set the level for you. Personally, I don't really use this feature as I prefer to set the volume myself, but experiment with both options to see what works for you. There you have it. That's everything you need to get started with recording in GarageBand for Mac. If you're just getting started with GarageBand on Mac or just want a refresh on the basics, you can grab a copy of my quick start guide completely free. I'll put a link to that and all the gear I've mentioned in this video down in the description below. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.